expect the continuity on his shirt and that then an explosion. In documents filed in the Los Angeles court today, Ms. Mitchell claims the script didn't call for any gun to be fired. In our opinion, Mr. Baldwin chose to play rock and roulette when he fired a gun without checking it and without having the armorer do so in his presence. The tragedy continues to dominate media production conversations around the world. Actor George Clooney weighed in during a new podcast recorded here in Australia, where he revealed he was a friend of Brandon Lee, who died in another on-set shooting in 1993. Every single time I'm handed a gun, every time, the handy gun, I look at it, I open it, I show it to the person I'm pointing it to, I show it to the crew, every yeah. single take, you hand it back to your honor when you're done, you do it again. And part of it is because of what happened to Brandon Lee, where everyone does it, everybody does it, and maybe I did that. I hope they did do that. I'll never forget what happened when the set of lights got touched. I realized the shooting and the camera gets frozen. Something going over and over again. And Alicia Cook for 10 years since. The court judge sentenced him to 41 months in prison for storming the Capitol in a bid to stop Congress certifying President Joe Biden's election. Chancellor accepted blame but said he was disappointed former President Donald Trump had not pardoned him. Former Trump strategist Steve Bannon has pleaded not guilty to two charges of contempt of Congress over the attack. Seconds later, Helena Hopkins would be dead, the leg would go seriously injured, and Mitchell would be the first to make an emergency call. Because two people accidentally shot on an urban set by a cross gun, we did not do it. Christmas parade in the U.S. state of Wisconsin. More than 40 people were injured, police confirming at least five are now dead. The driver is in custody. 
And investigators won't rule out that a sickening attack may have been an act of terror. A speeding red SUV plows through barriers. One officer shoots at the vehicle, the crowd bewildered. Until it narrowly misses this little girl. Then, as children cheerleaders march, the driver careers right through the parade. Yeah! A van caught in the road driver's path. Far from stopping, the driver apparently set on getting as far as the car would go. The next thing I heard were screams and turned my head and saw the car come and plow into the van that was just past my balcony at that point. Police and ambulances flood the stricken road. People look for loved ones. Others tend the injured. The street on which they've been heralding Christmas at an institution here, the annual parade, turned to a war zone. Today our community faced horror and tragedy in what should have been a community celebration. At least 12 children rushed to hospital. We do not have any detailed information on the fatalities. As police issued a shelter-in-place order, then confirmed they had seized the SUV and arrested the driver. They're still trying to fathom what motivated the apparent attack. Is Alamo at this time the weather density that any nexus to terrorism? In the United States, Tim Lester, 7 News. <laughs> festive afternoon in town turned into tragedy. Picture here a red four drive just moments before it strikes a marching band from behind. Today our community faced horror and tragedy in what should have been a community celebration. Police attempted to fire at the car after it crashed through several barricades in downtown Wakesha. As the marching band played and crowds walked on from the sidelines, a live stream camera captured the terrifying moment the four-wheel drive sped through the parade, followed by a police car seconds later. Dozens were hit, including this group of young girls dancing and waving prayer homes. I did speak with a couple of witnesses who were there, and the way they described what they saw, they had no idea what was happening because it was so bizarre and so awful. The nightmare is filmed, captured by witnesses. One video shows the four drive narrowly missing a young girl. Very transducent, very chaotic. There is no other threats involved The he does not see. A person of interest is in custody. Police have yet to comment on a possible motive behind the attack. Captain this, ABC News, Washington. Thomas Police say he was fleeing a nearby nightclub. He terrorized the town's main street. We are confident we packed it alone. There are no evidence that this is a terrorist incident. Among those killed, members of the Milwaukee Dancing Grounds. Main Street still bears the marks of yesterday's horror, and this town still has a long fight ahead. The local children's hospital says it treated 10 children in intensive care. Six remain in a critical condition. The town sharing its grief at the dust future. I nearly stopped me because of what it was with my mother. You never know anything about that to your kids when you let them walk the door. In Warbishaw, Wisconsin, Tim Lester, said News. And injuring nearly 50 others. School children and grandparents were among the victims. And a warning, this report by North America correspondent Barbara Miller contains distressing and graphic content. The aftermath of an event that will forever haunt Waukesha, Wisconsin. The truck came out of nowhere and all of a sudden you just hear the sound of people being hit. The sound of screaming. The sound of scarring. A car siding for the Christmas parade. Leaving <laughs> shocked and confused spectators scurrying for safety. This nurse was at the parade with her family and was one of the first to provide aid. 
and that's when uh, we came across the little boy that was in the road, um, pretty purple. Um, I didn't really have to do CPR on him, but um, it's also his neck for a pulse, and he had one. 18 kids were brought to our children's emergency department, ranging from ages 3 to 16 years of age. The suspect has been named as 39-year-old Daryl Brooks, who was released on bail earlier this month on a number of charges, including deliberately running down a woman with his car. The suspect is charged with involvement in domestic disturbance, which is just minutes prior. And the suspect left that scene just prior to our arrival uh, to that domestic uh, disturbance. There is no evidence that this is a terrorist incident. An entire community is struggling, struggling to cope with the horrific act of violence. A day after the tragedy, the community came together, no longer filled with Christmas cheer, but with grief and horror. Barbara Miller, ABC News. Many of them also children are spending another night recovering as the alleged driver today fronted court to hear his charges. Catherine Furka reports from Walkershaw. Only minutes after ploughing his SUV through a Christmas parade, <laughs> Darren Brooks pleaded with neighbours for help. I'm going to Walker. I'm supposed to be waiting for it over here, but I don't know when it's coming to the car for me, please. The 39-year-old claimed to be stranded and was offered a sandwich and coat while he waited for his ride. This whole time, he's got my phone. So when I'm getting messages to shop in place and the suspect on the loose, he's got the phone getting those messages. I am oblivious. But the police weren't far off. <laughs> Brooks fronted court today, facing five counts of murder. Today, we learned of another death of a child. That sixth victim has been identified as an eight-year-old boy. Brooks has a long criminal history and is also a child sex offender. Incredibly, he even had an active warrant out for his arrest in the state of Nevada. While state authorities are under pressure to explain how a man like Brooks was allowed to be out on the streets, police here in Waukesha say their focus is on helping the families of victims get justice. John Kulik's wife was killed He's furious Brooks was free on bail. I wanted to take the world to know what was taken. She was a beautiful person. Ryan Conkey was watching his niece at Sunday's parade. The 11-year-old suffered a broken pelvis, internal bleeding, and lost a kidney. I didn't speak with Justin this morning. She said, tell them to get them back together. At least six children remain in a critical condition. Catherine Furkin, for 10 News First, Walkershaw. Conflicted gunshot wound. The 23 year old remains were found in Florida swampland last month following a manhunt which lasted weeks. He had returned alone from a cross country trip. He took with Petito before disappearing again. 22 year old Petito was later found strangled to death at a national park in Wyoming. This month, a just 1300 Australian dollar surety. Today, his father was said that it's seven million dollars. New video has also emerged of the moment Brooks was caught by police. Brooks is likely to face more charges after an eight-year-old boy died, the sixth victim of the tragedy. All at the same time, it took a perfect alignment of conditions with the rare event only occurring at night after a full moon and requiring a minimum water temperature of 26 degrees.
the men who murdered the 25-year-old. Harbury's mother wept in the back row as the verdicts were read. The verdict today was a verdict based on the facts, yeah. based on the evidence. The word will form all over the world, but we have a jury of 11 words. They look like they were on the east side. rested on suggestions Arbery had committed a crime and was being chased to make a citizen's arrest. But the jury found no evidence to support that he was ever doing anything more than going for a job. The three defendants all face life in prison. Captain Burkin, the 10 years first in the United States. In particular, my Simon, who Ruth got over the net from about a metre out basically. It was a bad miss, but Australia was well on top and then Unfortunately, we conceded another goal just after the break, which uh, did make it difficult from there. They conceded a penalty as well to make it a 3 0 win to the USA. Sam Kerr soldiered on. She has had been uh, having a stomach bug all week, but battled on for about 60 minutes today. So, in the end, it wasn't the result that Australia wanted, but they did, did get a record home crowd on Australian soil of 36,109 fans. So, there's a lot of love for the Matildas. They didn't get the result today, but they do get another chance, Chris, on Tuesday in Newcastle. Thanks, Ben. Thanks, Hamilton, for joining us. First, the skipper for Tamiki Gallup, fans lighting up the break in wet weather, Australia's smiling assassin putting to bed any sickness concerns to take her place. <laughs> Took just 24 seconds for the smiles to be wiped off Aussie face. Early challenge perhaps for America and the worst possible start. Shopping start forced the Matildas into all-out attack early. Tony Gustafson rallied the crowd as chances went begging. The ball is a good one for Claire Simon. With opportunities few and far between, this really is the one that got away. Well, what a chance for Claire Simon. She probably won't get an easier one. It was almost deja vu to start the second half. And they scored early in the first half. That scored early in the second half. Hopes of Sam Kerr equally. Tim Cahill's Australian goal scoring record ended in the 62nd minute. So close with that header to get him goal number 50. Uh, and that's that will be for Newcastle. The subdued mood completely souring as USA were put on the spot. USA 3, Australia 0. Any salvation thwarted by the visitors as allegiances were tested in another chapter of this fierce rivalry. Did you do anything to make the coach through? I gave everything I had to write, but. Um, wasn't good enough on the day, so like I said, Tuesday we'll go to Trent Simpson for 10 News First. The rain didn't deter them. As thousands again marched through the streets of Sydney CBD. With one key message. The whole thing is a scary as far as I'm concerned. Crowds spilled into Hyde Park, filling most of it this afternoon. With signs as colourful as their points of view. We're here to show that not everybody agrees with what the government is deciding for us. Federal MP Craig Kelly was among them. We've got people from all backgrounds, we've got all age groups, we've got young kids, we've got old people. We are, this is Australia. This is the grassroots of Australia. It was tense at times as police held the line, moving some protesters on. Police too, though, they're prepared, not taking any chances, including on the Gold Coast, where One Nation leader Pauline Hanson made an appearance. We want our freedom. We want our choice. It is our choice. While in Melbourne, protesters directed their anger at Premier Daniel Trump. I just believe we should be able to live with freedom the way we always have. And while in Sydney, there were no arrests. Expect more demonstrations like these in the weeks to come. The turnout today is a true reflection of what people are half thinking. Matthew Duff Skinner said in news. 17 months when the judge repeatedly denied her requests for bail. Second fire to hit that building in a week. At least two textile businesses were completely destroyed with the roof of the building caving in. The LA arson counterterrorism teams were already investigating the earlier blaze and have since returned to the scene. Mm -hmm. Long time to write the lyrics of West Side Story. I'm 
Unfortunately, they may have given the Matildas the early wobbles. And the worst possible start. 24 seconds on the clock. Yes. Many a rev up from the record crowd as Sam Kerr nearly delivered from distance. This time gets on top. An Australian record 50th goal still eluding the skipper. Kaya Simon had no excuse from a meter out. Well, what's the chance for Kaya Simon? She probably won't get an easier one. Plenty of frustration, 1-0 at the break. The start of the second, like deja vu for the Aussies. And they scored early in the first half, they scored early in the second half. With Kerr off for the last 30 minutes, the Matildas' hopes of a comeback didn't last much longer. A controversial penalty for the visitors, and a third on the score sheet. Australia's next big thing didn't throw into town. Oh, that's another save from Casey Murphy. But no miracle on grass, 3-0 the final score, and plenty of work to do for Tony Gustafson's team. All of his coach Dave Brown. Along the way, a swag of the industry's biggest champions. In one of his last interviews, Stephen Sondheim spoke about an early lesson from his childhood mentor, Oscar Hammerstein. He said, this is what I feel about, you know, love and humanity. You're right what you feel. The lyricist for West Side Story, he injected mirth and metal into a Romeo and Juliet tale set in his hometown, New York City. <laughs> Considered by some as the Shakespeare of musical theater, he wrote the lyrics and music for 16 full-length productions. <laughs> Six Tony Awards for Best Score. A Pulitzer Prize for Sunday in the Park with George. And an Academy Award for the song Sooner or Later in the 1990 film Dick Tracy. While his songs didn't often top the pop charts, his musicals went on to be made into films, including the upcoming remake of West Side Story directed by Steven Spielberg. But his love remained the stage. The cast and company dedicate this performance to you. What's great about the theater is it's a living organism. A play, a musical, lives on by its reinterpretation. Tributes have poured in. His contemporary, composer Andrew Lloyd Webber writing, your contribution to theater will never be equaled. Hugh Jackman crediting him with shifting an entire art form and Barbara Streisand expressing gratitude that he lived to be 91 years old because he kept on creating. Even after winning a special Tony Award for Lifetime Achievement and a Presidential Medal of Freedom, the highest civilian honor in the U.S., he kept at his craft with a new musical, Square One. The only reason to write is from love. His genius will live on. And I will always be grateful to you for laying out the, the desire and the beauty of the act of creation itself. 
When I read that, I was touched, and I'm touched again. Wayne World Champion Team USA said me earlier this evening, the scoreline wasn't reflective of the tight competition in front of a record-breaking home crowd of the Australians. Opponents don't get much tougher than number one in the world. Team USA down under for the first time since the Sydney Olympics, and they made themselves right at home. And the worst possible start. 24 seconds on the clock. The first international goal for Ashley Hatch was costly for the Matildas. Sam Kerr almost missed the match with a dark gastro, but gave our women the first opportunity to equalise, and the chances kept coming. The ball is a good one for Simon. Coach Tony Gustafson tried to rile up the ticket crowd to help his side convert. And look at it, can't believe it, kicked out of that top corner. Disbelief to this perfect setup from Peyton Ford also went begging. was palpable, bringing back memories of the last time these two sides met in the bronze medal match in Tokyo. The dream run down the right side only added salt to the wounds. That's a fantastic strong run and a comeback. And they scored early in the first half. They've scored early in the second half. They push it out to three with a penalty against Ellie Carpenter, giving Lindsay Horan the direct shot. And she scores despite the best efforts. Home crowd of 36,000 tried to will the Matildas to get on the board. The three more scoreline not reflective of the tight competition in this friendly match or the lessons learnt. We are not going to change the way we play. This is who we are, this is what we're about, and we need to learn to do it better. And, and we need to do that against the best team. The two sides will meet again on Tuesday. Looking high, ABC News. Question is, will we be prepared for it at 7.9 billion shots of the various vaccines already given worldwide? Could this new variant simply sidestep them? People who are working on the vaccine, they have a pretty good degree of confidence that a boosted vaccine, so three full doses of vaccine, is going to be fairly protective against this new variant. Vaccine maker Moderna is more cautious. It and others are scrambling to test their shots against Omicron. We have to go through a couple of weeks yet of uncertainty. One possibility, he says, we all need a booster shot targeted to the new variant. Our platform, we can move very fast. Uh, we think within you know, weeks, uh, to maybe two to three months, we would be able to have a Omicron-specific vaccine Booster. This, as South Africa's president hits out at Australia and others to shut down flights from his region. These restrictions are completely unjustified. He says the new block on air travel is not informed by science. What you can do is you can delay it enough to get us better prepared. President Biden's chief COVID advisor applauds South Africa for warning the world that backs the travel bans as giving countries time. Utilize the time that you're buying to fill in the gaps. Like getting more people vaccinated and more vaccinated people booster shots. In the United States, Tim Lester, 7 News. Free vaccine partner in crime or a scapegoat. The two conflicting portraits of Ghislaine Maxwell presented to jurors in a Manhattan courtroom. With Maxwell's supporters watching on, the British social life was accused of operating a pyramid scheme of abuse with Epstein, lulling young girls into a false sense of security, some as young as 14. The four women in this case will testify against Maxwell, including Annie Farmer. Maxwell is a really important part of the grooming process, and they work together as a team. For other women who accused Epstein of sexually abusing them, this may be the closest they get to a day in court. You know, to my clients, Gillian Maxwell was the all-powerful monster. The idea that she's even on trial is just surreal to them. The first witness to take the stand today was a pilot who worked for Epstein for almost 30 years. The prosecution plans to call several staff members who they say worked under a culture of silence. Lawrence Paul Vesovsky Jr. was at the controls of the plane known as the Lolita Express. Flight logs likely to reveal the secrets of just who else was on board. Even in death, Epstein, who constantly...
conduct his crimes loom over this trial, and for that, Maxwell's lawyers say she's being unfairly punished. Ever since Eve was accused of tempting Adam with the apple, her lawyer told the court, women have been blamed for the bad behaviour of men. 59-year-old has pleaded not guilty to all six sex trafficking charges. In New York, Ashley Mulaney, 7 News. Girls manipulated them and served them up to be sexually abused by Jeffrey Epstein. She was, they argued, setting young girls up to be molested by a predator. Ms. Maxwell's defence argued their client was being made a scapegoat for Mr. Epstein's crimes. Ever since Eve was accused of tempting Adam with the apple, women have been blamed for the bad behaviour of men. Helene Maxwell's sister was in court to hear lawyers debate if she was a predator or a pawn. Do you think your sister is a scapegoat for Jeffrey Epstein? Give a little context. In the run up to the trial, the defence has complained frequently about the condition of Helene Maxwell. They say she's in a Brooklyn detention centre, saying they are negatively impacting her health. In court today, she appeared alert, agile, and active, frequently cashing notes to her lawyers. The prosecution will begin its case in earnest tomorrow, when one of at least four accusers could take the stand. Barbara Mayor, ABC News, New York. Try again tonight to dig these players' exposure against the best in the world. The crowd is building up here. The rain is eased. They're hoping for a crowd of over 20,000, which would set a record for a Matildas match here in Newcastle. And the fans are hoping for an Australian win. The girls played really good last game, but unfortunately they lost. But I'm pretty sure they'll bounce back tonight. We are so excited to see Sam Kerr in action and all of the girls. Um, it's going to be an awesome game. The Australians will be hoping not to start the way they did on Saturday when they conceded a goal in the first minute of the match and they get their chance shortly to try and put things right tonight here at Mother Stadium. Emma Simpson reporting there. Them critically, police say the team is refusing to talk but they know he used a semi-automatic handgun bought by his father just four days ago. It's so chillingly normal. The armed responders, the press conference at the school gates. The suspect fired multiple shots with multiple victims, but inside a classroom... Sheriff's office! Take him down! Sheriff's office is the call. It's safe. Yeah, it's safe to come out. But is it a trap? We're not willing to take that risk right now. I can't hear you. We're not taking that risk right now. Okay, well, go to the door with my hand, bro. Okay. Yeah, bro. For long seconds, the teenagers hesitate, and then they run. <laughs> Behind them, a 15-year-old boy, armed with a semi-automatic handgun, destroying lives as young as his own. We have uh, three students, a 16-year-old male, a 14-year-old female, and a 17-year-old female. Police arrived to find the shooter waiting, having dropped the gun. He's a kid, you know, he's a regular kid that goes to school, you know. He's been picked on and stuff like this, so when a kid has been picked on and some people's bullying him, you're going to get this, you're going to get this reaction. School shootings are just a tiny part of America's gun problem with kids. Every year, more than 3,000 American children and teenagers are killed by guns. 15,000 more are wounded. An incredible 3 million American children each year witness a shooting, making them, according to research, more likely to abuse drugs and alcohol, suffer from depression and anxiety, or fail at school. And America seems powerless to stop it. I think this is how her parents watch this. Hugh Riverton for 10 News First. In her when she was just 14, and as Catherine Furkin reports from New York, two former US presidents were also named. Struggling to hold back tears, the first alleged victim to testify in Ghislaine Maxwell's trial told a packed courtroom that she was just 14 years old when the British socialite lured her into Jeffrey Epstein's world where she was repeatedly abused over the next three years. Describing the first assault, she said she was frozen in fear. He took me in the pool house and on the right hand side was this couch, futon looking thing, and he just proceeded to pull me over. 
He put me on top of himself and proceeded to masturbate on me. The alleged victim said Maxwell was often in the room when she was being abused by Epstein. Sometimes other adults were present too, but she felt it was Maxwell who was in control. What would Maxwell typically do? Assistant US Attorney Alison Moe asked. She, along with others, would just start taking their clothes off. Jeffrey would get on the massage table. It just turned into this orgy. Earlier today, Epstein's longtime personal pilot was cross-examined. He testified that he'd never seen Epstein or Maxwell engage in any form of sexual activity on board any of the flights he piloted between 1991 and 2019. The pilot also testified that he often flew powerful and famous men on Epstein's private plane, including Prince Andrew, Kevin Spacey, Bill Clinton and Donald Trump. The defence will continue its cross-examination of the first alleged victim tomorrow before three further accusers will take the stand. Catherine Furkin for 10 News First, New York. A teenage gunman is in custody accused of shooting dead at least three fellow students at a school in Michigan. Eight others, including a teacher, were hurt when a 15-year-old opened fire with a semi-automatic handgun. The suspect's parents told him not to speak to detectives during a brief visit to the sheriff's station. It's reportedly the 28th school shooting in America this year. Known only as Jane, 41 years old, 14 when she claims the abuse started. Behind the walls of Jeffrey Epstein's Palm Beach mansion, Jane told how she'd be summoned to Epstein's massage room and was coaxed into group sex sessions with Ghislaine Maxwell watching on or touching her too. I felt ashamed, disgusted, confused, she told the court. Describing the first time Epstein abused her in the courthouse, I was frozen in fear. Jane said she first met the pair at a summer camp for gifted musicians and artists back in 1994. They invited her for tea, bought her gifts and gave her money for her struggling mother. Then, I was abused pretty much every time I would go over to his house and it all started to seem the same after a while. Maxwell's family was back at court for the second day of the trial, so too Epstein's longtime pilot, confirming he signed a non-disclosure agreement to protect the privacy of high-profile passengers like Bill Clinton, Donald Trump, Kevin Spacey and Prince Andrew. The pilot said he never witnessed any sexual activity on the plane, nor did he transport any underage girls without their parents. But this alleged victim told the court today she was just 15 when she was flown between Epstein's properties, travel often arranged by Maxwell. To that, her defence team called Jane a consummate actress, accusing her of a money grab. If found guilty, Maxwell faces decades behind bars. In New York, Ashley Miami, 7 News.